Good morning, Hello. guys. Good morning. Uh, we are um, live on YouTube this morning. Um, so this is the, I guess we can move around a little bit too. Yeah. The yeah. zero to 70K series on Poshmark or eBay. My name is Chris. I go by Daily Refinement online. So I'm in a space right now that's mostly cleared out. Um, sorry, we are below a wood shop, so there might be some knocking. Um, but this room is 15 by 15 or 225 square feet. It's about the size of a one car garage. Let me know in the chat if you guys can hear me okay. We're testing out the audio mm -hmm. uh, in this room. But essentially what I'm gonna try to do is build a store in here that can make $70,000 profit and be self-sufficient all inside here. This is inside my warehouse, which is 3,100 square feet. And um, so this is just the beginning. And I have a bunch of ideas I wanna test with you guys while you are here. Um, I'm going to do flat lay for clothing right here on the ground. Mm -hmm. I'm also going to build a little shipping listing station where you guys are being filmed from. So over here, there will be a little listing station. Right here is the photo station for shoes and clothing. So flat lay. Flat lay here. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to use uh, the tech and sports method for true flat lay. You guys know I have a video of me building a flat lay station into one of these Husky shelves back here, but mm -hmm. I'm just gonna do the flat lay station because it's a little bit faster. Um, also on this side, this shelf, uh, I wanna really encourage people to take their time when they're building their shelving system. So even though I have done this before literally 28,000 times, um, I'm going to just make sure all the shelves fit in the way that I want them to. So if I make more room between the shelves, um, it's actually easier to reach in and get it versus this, I have to literally pull out to get the ones in the back. Um, also, it's good to reinforce your boxes so that they last a little bit longer. Um, but this is gonna be the system. Each one of these racks holds 500 items and there's enough room in here to have four full racks, so 2,000 items. So 2,000 items, if I sell half a percent a day, that's 10 items per day times $20 profit. That's like 70 something thousand dollars a year profit pre-tax. So that's the whole point of um, building this system back here. But my sell through rate is pretty fast. I'm only picking up items I know will sell quickly. So hopefully I only need one or two of these shelves. Like perfect would be like 500 items in my store, 300 sell every month. That would be um, really nice not like having to build four of these because you guys can see how much room there is in this room right now, not having a bunch of inventory. Um, I had a meetup here on May 5th and shout out to Tony who left me a review. He said, the event was awesome. I learned how to list items really fast, but it wasn't fun. <laughs> so I, I, don't, I wasn't expecting the event to be fun because it was just me listing 30 items in an hour and a half. And then we went to happy hour after. And they, they ate donuts and had coffee while I listed. I wasn't expecting it to be a fun event. Um, there's already two people who have bought tickets for the next one, but it's only gonna be 10 people and I wanna just, Next time when people come, this room will be done mm -hmm. and people can list here and we can watch each other list and see how, how people go. But um, instead of just watching me do it, which I can expect to be very boring, but I wanted people to see what happens. So on May 5th, I listed 35 items. I only have two left, so 33 sold already in the first month. The only two I have left are um, a little pair of baby Jordans, which are really cute. These have not sold yet, which I'm surprised. And then a pair of Sorel boots, which I'm kind of asking a lot. I want $50 for them and they're waterproof, nice, and they're my size, size 12. So maybe I'm biased and I want to keep them subconsciously so I don't want to cheap sell them. But um, I only have two items left and it, it's only been 17 days. So maybe I don't need an inventory system if I only pick great items with this small of a store. I can just pick up 300 items a month, sell 300 items a month and just put them on the floor and I don't need the shelving system. Um, it's really making me think now because in this Poshmark closet, I'm going to add in both um, items that I get from the flea market. These are used items and also replenishable new items that I buy from liquidation. So I anticipate this first year on Poshmark, I should do 500,000 in sales. Uh, Pre-owned, hopefully I'm hoping for around 150,000 in sales for the used stuff. And then half of that will be profit, 75K. That would be perfect for this first year on the Poshmark closet. I'm actually finding it's pretty 
it's pretty decent compared to the last time I used the Poshmark. There's a lot more tools. Mm. So offer to likers has been very good for me. Um, I am sharing my closet 10 times a day right now. If you guys are wondering how many times I'm sharing, I heard that if you share more than that, you get banned. So I'm just gonna share 10 times a day. And I'm using the uh, Poshmark system. They have now a bulk a sh sharing system for all of your items. That's been very easy. My closet's tiny. It only takes like three minutes to do the whole thing, not too much. So do that a couple times a day. Um, using Flip, um, who I'm not sponsored by, but they are doing automatic offer to likers, which has been very easy. So on, on the eBay equivalent would be offer to, offer to watcher. Um, same thing, and we talk about that in our group constantly, the nine different promotions that you can do. But I also realized that most people rely on promotions and you know shenanigans to sell their items. The items I'm listing in my Poshmark closet, I don't actually have to share. Um, I'm listing items below market, great items, um, common things that you could find anywhere and they're selling quickly. So it's been pretty interesting. Also on Poshmark, it's very difficult to actually gauge sell-through rate. Um, it's based on just shared, so you really have no idea how long ago items sold because people might be sharing their whole closet, so it might look like, uh, I know you can use the date to figure out when they truly listed the item, but it's not like eBay where it will tell you the last 90 days how many sold. Poshmark is much more difficult to assess. In fact, if you looked at my closet, you'd have no idea when my items sell and for how much because of the, the way it's set up, the way they, they share it. It's, it actually makes it easier as a large seller to hide what's going on. So I think I can just kind of fly under the radar and do 500K this year on Poshmark and um, hopefully do pretty good. I, what I want to do with the money is I want to set up a 529 account for my son. I have one set up for Natalie. You can super fund it, which means that you can put five years of maximum investment into your kid's education and then let it sit over time um, tax-free. So essentially, um, I did one for Natalie already. I want to super fund my son Henry's um, 529 account. So when he wants to go to school later or, or boarding school or whatever, he can use those funds for that. I hope that my kids can spend one year abroad. I hope that they won't hate me if I send them to Japan for a year or something. I think that would be cool as a kid. I, I'd never had that kind of opportunity uh, growing up. And now being a parent, um, dude, it's exhausting. I'll tell you that um, <laughs> Right now, my, um, my whatnot has been on fire. The Poshmark closet's on fire. I'm spending so much time with my kids. But I was just telling Christine before the video, like, I'm pretty tired. Like, at the end of um, working about 10 hours a day and spending about six to seven hours a day with my family before and after, I'm pretty beat. And so last week, I actually had to cut back my gym time. I was going to the gym every single day. Now I'm only going to the gym three times a week. I just can't, I just don't have the energy to go more than three times a week right now. So the dream feed I just added with the baby. So um, Henry, I've been feeding him now for about two, two weeks at 10 p.m. So that's been cutting into my sleep. So that's why I can't go to the gym, but eventually he'll go to bed at seven like Natalie. I'll get all my time back and I can go to the gym every single day. So just this temporary blip where um, it's been rough, but it's important to take care of your health and your relationships because without that, you can't build your store. Um, I am actually more proud of my family and the way I take care of myself than my stores. So you can do health, wealth, relationships. I don't know if you can do much else. Um, I was just talking to my wife and I don't know what you guys think, but for a small business owner, I actually feel like I put in less hours than the average. Um, most small business owners are there from open till end. Like the, if you look at a, a deli owner, they're there like five o'clock in the morning. They don't go home till nine o'clock at night. That's a normal small business owner. For me, I go home at five o'clock every single day because I have to pick up my daughter. My wife hates cell phones, so I'm trying to put my phone away as soon as I get home. So I have a hard cutoff before and in the morning. I don't have 90 hours a week to work on my business. So I feel like for a small business owner, my wife actually was giving me some props, which is nice. She was like, um, you're actually doing a pretty good job for a small business owner. You're not like, you have some resemblance of work-life balance versus a lot of small business owners work themselves into the ground. If you guys have, um, you know, are listening right now, it's kind of weird, right? You're sacrificing your happiness to get success, which is supposed to make you happy. It's like a weird cycle. Um, so, you know, I do my best to try to have some, you know, work-life balance, but I'll tell you, it's extremely difficult. My, um, I feel like my productivity is pretty maxed out. I don't know if I could do that much more. Plus the YouTube channel I feel like has been, it's been okay recently, but I wanna really put some effort into it, which means I need to, I think, hire one more person for my whatnot operation. Right now I have three part-time people. 
Um, I think if I had one more person to help out a little bit more, then I could work on my YouTube channel a little bit more and put the effort in to get to a million subscribers. So if you guys are following and you enjoy this journey, um, I want to show people like how to like balance your whole life so that you can do this. Like take care of your family, have great relationships, and put in the chat please how you guys rate your family, your relationships. Maybe you don't have a family. Maybe you have a chosen family. Um, your health and then your your store. Health, wealth, relationships. That's everything to me. So let me know if you're spiritual. Let us know your relationship with the spirit. Um, and now I have Q and A. I mean, hopefully there is a bunch of questions on how this is going to work. But I'm excited. This room is relatively clean. There is a few boxes in here, but I can now work to start taking pictures. And last thing. Um, people were complaining already about my Poshmark pictures being unprofessional. <laughs> I think it's important to realize that. And I'm not saying be perfect before you start. Mm -hmm. My pictures are just outside on the ground. There's nothing fancy yet. I didn't have a photo station yet. The first 33 items I sold on Poshmark, I made about $500 profit. So $500 profit is enough for this piece of carpet and these two front facing lights. Now I have a professional photo setup, mm -hmm. right? I'm um, actually downgrading from the Rolo to the Brother printer, which was cheaper. Um, I don't know if tech would um, um, subscribe to what I did, but I bought two refurbished Brother printers on Amazon because they were 40% cheaper. So I actually profited from moving away from Rolo. The Rolo printers I sold used for more than the Brother printers cost new. So I ordered my labels by four, I ordered 4,000 labels to get them for two cents a piece. But I feel like you can get them to one cent a piece. Um, and I'm not a fan of stealing labels from UPS. You guys, do not do that. That's, when you order from UPS and ship USPS, that's called stealing. Don't do that. That's not a proper use of their supplies. I think it's bad juju and the juju police will get you. So uh, what goes around comes around. Just buy your labels. They're two cents. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, we have lots of questions. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Angela says, tips for sourcing good, consistent <clears throat> product. So I posted a picture in our Facebook group of me at the flea market. So yesterday I was done sourcing at 521 in the morning. Um, so I was out there and actually, yeah, I was out there starting at around four looking for items. And so my goal at the flea market is to find around 210 items per week. Um, that's my like the maximum I can get. But yesterday I found Hermes, I found Fall Raven, um, I found a whole bunch of vintage Honda stuff, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, it's, it's like vintage Honda, but made in USA. I thought that was some really cool. I, I might actually show you guys. I'll go grab those in a second, but um, I wanna find 200 items at the flea market. I wanna go before anybody else is there. And I've been going every single weekend for three years now. So I have some good relationships met um, with people and then if I can actually get one more person to help me with shipping, because right now um, I'm, about to, I'm about to get a minivan. I'm excited. So I get a minivan. Nice. If I get one person that can help me go to the post office, um, that would be fantastic. I know that um, you guys saw I did have the pickup with Frazier. One of the issues is that I don't know when they come. And I'm the one that's currently facilitating the handoff. So they tell me when they're going to come then I have to run out and deliver the packages and hand them one by one to the driver. It takes a really long time. It takes like 40 minutes a day just to hand off the stuff. And I don't know when they're going to come. So it always interrupts me. If I had a minivan, I actually think all my orders would, from one day would fit in a minivan because we're selling between 400 and a thousand items a day. So if that goes into the minivan, <clears throat> if I were to go with a person, it would only take about 25 minutes if we loaded the van, drove to the post office, which is 0.4 miles away, dumped everything in, and then drove back. That would only take 25 minutes if I had somebody going with me and helping me load. So that would be great instead of waiting and don't know when the post office guy is going to come. And it takes 40 minutes to hand packages to them. And that hasn't been a very good process. The post office in my area is very understaffed. And... I kind of got this tutorial on how the old the post office is old school. So if you want something done, you need to write a letter. And I have never done that. So to like, I, I know it's inconvenient for them to come pick up, but I'm spending like a million dollars a year on postage, right? So there's like, I have to like write a letter to the right supervisor so that they'll come. At, what I really want is a different driver. This guy is not really equipped to do this much packaging. Like it's like, he's normally picking up 10 or 20 packages at each place is going to mine's like a whole truck so he has to like go to the post office empty come here with an empty truck fill up and then go and 
it's just like uh, to, for me to make that more seamless, I think I need to write a letter. So a bunch of people are giving me advice. There's actually people from the post office who watch my YouTube channel, which is funny. And um, got a whole bunch of really good advice. So I'm trying to make that more seamless. So the post office part more seamless. And then if I had um, a little bit of generic help with operations like building boxes, um, breaking down boxes, moving pallets, recycling stuff, just a few hours a week, I think that I would have more time to work on my YouTube channel, which I really want to just like help everyone follow Tech and Sports as a model and build wealth through reselling. Because like, I think he's built eight figures of wealth through reselling, starting with the T-Mobile Sidekick. Why can't we do the same? Let's all get on that path and um, start building wealth through reselling and learning about how, how to be frugal, how to be thrifty, how to flip things. And um, I can't wait to share what I've learned on Poshmark so far, but I'm sure there's questions. Mm -hmm. So your tip for good consistent product is making relationships with people. Making relationships and going every good. week for years. Mm -hmm. Go every week for years, you'll learn where all the good stuff comes from. Mm -hmm. um, Donovan says, how can I determine what would be good items to source in my area? That's great. So in is that, that, that sounds like I paid someone to ask that question. <laughs> that's, like, <laughs> that's like the basis of our group. Um, so in our group, we have a call called the zip code call where we show you guys how to find stuff in your zip code. Because it's going to depend on where you live, what you find. Like, so for me, I might find, you know, where I live is more granola. So we're going to find more brands like Patagonia, Cool, um, the North Face. That's common here. But we, in my specific area, it's not very blue collar. I don't find Carhartt or um, um, Duluth Trading Company or Dickies. I don't, for some reason, they're just not in my, where I'm looking. So if you are looking for that, you will find it. It's not like in the Bay Area, there are no blue collar people. Just where I'm looking, that's not where it is. You'd find more of that stuff. Like at the flea markets, you can find Dickies and workwear all, all day long. That's where people are, are looking for that high value workwear since it's really popular. But in our group, we go over a zip code call where we figure out what's in your area, what's popular, what do you have a unique advantage finding. And it does start with sourcing because for me, I'm only looking for things that are going to sell quick. And we use a barometer, so of a half a percent sell-through rate, but that's not what you look for. Like, meaning it's okay if an item takes six months to sell under the model of if you have 2,000 items and you're listing and selling 10 a day, but that's not what you're aiming for. I'm looking for things that are going to sell this month. I'll give you guys an example. I have two pairs of Clark sneakers in my store that I got from liquidation. Unfortunately, it's all the same size. That's what happens. So I got like 200 pairs of leopard print Clarks, but only in size nine, right? Terrible. Meaning it's way easier if you get a full size run or like different colors, different styles. This is all one color or one color away, one size, right? But they're selling fine. I think I've sold 10 pairs already on Poshmark. I have the same shoe in nine and a half that's red. Red's not the most popular color. It's more difficult to match. I've only sold one. I even lowered the price all the way to $8 and still only sold one. So it's, it's like I have to maybe wait a, a year to sell all of these red Clark sneakers because there's not very many people looking for them, right? So no matter what I do, no matter how many times I share, it will not sell because it's not popular, right? Versus I had some Vince Camuto booties, which are more in style. They're suede, they're cuter, they're nicer. They sold in, in a week pretty much for full price. So it's like really depends on what you're looking for, what sizes sell better. For me, larger sizes sell well, but the Clarks are great sizes, nine and nine and a half, and they still don't sell that fast because people aren't looking for it. So there's a lot of nuance to this. This morning, a lady in our group was just telling me, can you give me exact instructions? And I, I was like, no, there's no, ex guys, there's no exact instructions. T you tell me. There's no exact instructions. It's just like a, I'm giving you some, a base to work around mm -hmm. and then you do the best you can with what you have until you know better and then you do better. So I know now if I get a liquidation deal, right? And they say, hey, you know what? Because I, I pay $2 for these sneakers per pair. Sounds like a great deal. But you know what? I would not buy this lot again, even though it's $2 for sneakers that are worth, the, the MSRP is 70. I wouldn't pay two again because I'm going to sit on these forever. If I'm pricing them at $8 and they're not moving, there's something wrong with that style because that's really cheap, right? So $8 plus shipping, I only sold one pair. That's kind of scary to me. Very, very, very cheap. For this, the other models that I have, discounting it to a price where it sells immediately is possible. And that's what I learned from Whatnot. In a year on Whatnot, I probably sold 200,000 items. 
I'm thinking about what sells right now, right? What sells right now is very different than, oh, I hope this sells in a year or two years or I think it's profitable. Only certain things sell right now. I made a mistake on these Echo shoes I bought. I bought 8,000 pairs of Echos. They sell great on Poshmark. They do not sell well on whatnot. It's not trendy enough, right? It's not like a picture with a taco on it would sell way better than a leather handmade shoe. Uh, somebody took like a day of their life to make that shoe. That doesn't sell as well as a shirt with a taco on it because on whatnot, people just buy with their eyes. So like teaches you, like people buy with their eyes. It could be a great brand, great item, but the visual is not good and they can't buy. Something like 80% of people's decisions are based on what they see. So like this is why no one cares about tech and sports because he wears dry fit shirts, dry fit shorts, drives a Honda, never talks about himself. So if 80% of people's decisions are based on looks, he looks like a bum. So nobody would take his advice seriously. But if he rolls in next week with a Lamborghini and he's wearing Gucci from head to toe, does our group go from 3,000 people to 30,000 people because people believe him now? This is his, I, it's, actually kind of, it's actually kind of a joke. It made me laugh earlier because I was building this system. <laughs> it's a piece of carpet. It's an upside down bin. I even joked, I, call, I texted him and I'm like, yo, what brand? What brand plastic bin did you use? I was just joking because obviously it doesn't matter what brand the <laughs> bin is, but like this setup, right? He has a tutorial in our, in our group of how he takes photos in 23 seconds. Um, it's just, how can it be this easy, right? So my complicated system that Christine took a day of her life to edit of me going to Home Depot oh, right. and building and this, building, <laughs> Joanne, building this elaborate thing that's slower. You know what I mean? It's cost, it costs 10 times as much money and it's slower. So that's like been a story in my life. I, I think I've actually put in, I put in like a hundred years of work already. I'm almost 40, but I put in a hundred years worth of effort already. Um, and and I, I don't have a hundred years worth of results. Um, <laughs> it is interesting. Okay, I'm, I'm off my soapbox. <laughs> Hopefully there's more questions. Uh, yes, let's see. Jamie says, is there a timetable on this? How long to get to 70K a year? Um, I think, right, I haven't had any days on Poshmark where I haven't had any sales. So I think I've had at least one of the items sell every single day. So let me see. I would say it's going to take me, what, 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 it's May 22nd? By the yeah. end of the summer, it'll definitely have 10 sales and 10 listings a day. It won't take that long. Because um, I, I don't need that many items. I only need 70 items per week. And at the flea market, I can find 200. So it's not going to take me too long. I'm going to divide it into our, our shut up and list group and our shut up and list call in the group. I'm going to host two two hour sessions a week. And during those two two hour sessions, I'm going to list my 35 items. So 35 items twice a week is going to be how I set up my operation here. So it's only going to take me till um, probably mid-summer. I'd say by July, the store will be making $200 a day on the um, used side. And then the new side, um, hopefully, will be making around the same. So I'm pretty excited for um, the margins on used stuff is much higher. Like uh, my cost of goods on used stuff is like $5. My cost of goods on used stuff is $4. But on used stuff, right here, guys, this is the plan. So this is where I'm going to take photos, right? This right here, I'm hoping to have a two-week queue. So two weeks is only 140 items, and I can find 200 on Sunday. So I want to stack this up to 140 items and just leave it. 140 $20 bills and list 70 a week and call it. So for shoes, um, I'm going to have the same thing because I have that rolly shoe rack, which I'm going to roll in here and it'll have the shoes that are ready to list. So uh, I'll probably, my goal is to have 70 shoes ready to go and 140 clothing ready to go. And I can't have 140 shoes because my rolling rack only fits 70. So I'll just leave it there and I'll do a mix of clothing and shoes that I find at the flea. And uh, I'm enjoying finding better shoes. Like, for example, this pair of Sorel boots. Um, my average cost on shoes at the flea market is only $4, too. So this pair of Sorel boots definitely was like $200. And um, it's waterproof. And um, 
this is definitely a $20 bill. So at least 70 nice shoes. And then people are asking like, um, when we say eight and a 30, I wanna clarify what Tekken Sports was talking about. So like, let's say you, you spend $8 on something and then you sell it for 30 plus shipping. It's not necessarily a $20 profit, it depends on first class or not first class or if you promote it or however you did your coupon or markdown. But if you take $8, right? And then you sell for 30 plus and you make a $12 profit, essentially you now have $20. So you turned your $8 into a $20 bill. With that $20 bill, you can buy two items for 16, put $4 in the bank. So if you're new to our group, join the group, go on the Patreon, listen to the advanced eBay podcast. And we talk about rolling your money into um, more inventory. And then that's how you grow. The part that I didn't get the memo was you put some in the bank. I've just been rolling it in the more inventory. And I just realized, have you, and I was talking about this in the group. Have you guys heard this term before? Inventory rich, cash poor. So like have a bunch of inventory, but no money. You have 3000 items in your store, but no sales. I don't want that. I want no items in my store. I have two items in my Poshmark closet that are um, from my experiment. I don't want any. Please, somebody listening right now, buy two <laughs> items so that we have none. I don't want any items. Mm -hmm. this, this beautiful shelving system, I want it to be empty. Mm -hmm. I, I am happy if I just list 10 and the 10 sell, and then tomorrow I list 10 and sell 10, I don't have any items in my store. As beautiful as my organization system was, I don't want it. <laughs> I want it to be empty. Mm -hmm. So people are now saying, hey, well, what if it's not fair because you are an influencer and things sell faster for you? I want to encourage you guys for a couple of reasons here. You too could be like me and in 2017, start building your social media influence from the ground up. Do it every single week. Two years ago when I had Natalie, when I did the dream feed, then I did my YouTube videos. So it was like 11 o'clock at night, that was the only time I had to work on videos. So I made videos at 11 o'clock at night. I didn't have an editor before, before I made all these videos by myself. And I didn't start till 11 p.m. So it's like really, and I was just telling Christine before the video, I'm feeling like extra triggering recently because like, I feel like I had to put in the work in the beginning. I didn't have anybody helping me, right? Yeah. I learned horrible things from, from my parents as far as like the, how to build a business, how to be financially sound. I didn't learn any of that. I learned you live in America, you can buy anything on credit, mm -hmm. right? Spend more than you make every single week. Always worry about money. That's how, that's how I was raised. Mm -hmm. So like I have to undo all that programming. I have to undo all this negative stuff that I learned along the way and learn how to do things simply, efficiently, in an organized manner. And I also realize now, this is maybe important, maybe pause the video for a second, write this part down. You will not get anything the first time you hear it. I am a slow learner. It took me years to figure out this is, this is better than my elaborate system before. Even though I am partners with the, I am partners on the Facebook group with arguably the best reseller of all time. I talk to him every day, still took me three years. So if you're just a regular person, hopefully you're a faster learner than me because it took me a long time to learn. You need to pick up items that sell right away. Do not pick up red size small in the beginning. That's going to be a disaster. You're going to have all these items in your store, but no money. Um, we did this experiment and this is what I want my video to be about today. Um, I want my video to be about um, what if some, what would somebody cash offer you for your store today? This is what I want to talk about. Somebody wanted to buy your store right now, what would they offer you? I can say for sure, all the items in my store, I could sell today, right? I have, I don't know, ridiculous amount of items in my warehouse. I could sell all of them today and still make a profit. I bought, I bought below actual cash value. What somebody would offer me, I paid below that, right? So all the jeans that I'm selling on my website, dailyrefinement.com, still looking for one person locally that can buy these jeans and come picking them up. I can sell them, nationwide for $3 shipped, but I really want somebody local to come pick up 500, 500 pairs of jeans every week for $2 a pair. Local, that would be epic. You come pick it up, let that person make the most profit, and then I don't have to box everything up, I can just load it into their car, and we just call it a day, and that's like passing the profit on to them. But I just, I'm just excited to, I'm just excited that I know that I can sell all my inventory today if I need to. But I get all of these offers every day that say, Chris, I'm really desperate. I need to sell my inventory. Can you make me an offer? I need $12 an item. I look at their store and I'm like, I wouldn't even take your store for free because it wouldn't sell. You, you're giving me a, like a J. Crew size small sweater that 
sure, somebody wants it, but they're, they're only going to pay $8 plus shipping for it in, in six months. I don't want that item in my store. Mm -hmm. This pair of cute baby Jordans will sell, right? If I offer this on Facebook Marketplace for $5, it'll sell mm -hmm. today. I don't, need to, I don't need to wait forever. This pair of Sorel boots, I paid $4 for them. I could sell them for $5 right now. That's what I want people to do. Like if you're desperate, just sell the inventory that you have in your store. If you can't sell it, there's your problem. Should be able to sell you. You should never be cash poor in a in a business where you're in the business of selling things, right? So I'm just thinking, what is someone going to offer you realistically for what's in your store? And a bunch of people this morning in the morning call were saying, "I'll take my store for what I paid for. I don't even need to make a profit. I want that money back so I can put it in the better stuff." That's the whole message today. Mm -hmm. So the cash offer for your store might be a really humbling experience. You're struggling with your store. I dare you to put your your link to your store in the chat and see what people will offer you. It'll be really, really humbling. You might have 2,000 items in your store and someone would pass. You'd be like, I wouldn't take your store for free. I'd have to take all that stuff, relist it, and I wouldn't get as much money for it than just going out and buying 10 good items. Because if, if you have 3,000 items in your store and you're not getting regular sales, who wants that store? I don't, I don't want that store. I, I don't want a store of slow sales. I want all bangers, everything in your store sells right away. I want that store. But if you have that store, you're not selling it. Unless someone makes you a really good offer. So as you guys know, um, Tekken Sports is retiring, right? And he has 50,000 items. Um, I was like, yo, what if you just had a warehouse sale? Could you sell all of it in one day? And he said, yeah. If I put five bucks warehouse sale open tomorrow at 12 in, at midnight, it'd be gone in one day. There would be a line of 500 people waiting in line to buy his inventory for $5. In one day, he'd cash out 250 k And he paid $4 an item, so he would make 50000 in one day. But he's like, I don't want that. That's not a good deal for me. I'll wait. If your store is actually good, you will not do that. You will wait. I, I'm not taking an offer for my inventory today. I'm going to take my time and make, make, a, make a small fortune from it. I'm not going to. No way I'm going to sell it to you guys for $1 for over what I paid for it. It's too low. So, but I was like, hey... What if I offered you 13 a piece for your 50,000 items? Then he said, I'll hand deliver it to you. <laughs> I'll load up a semi truck and I'll ride shotgun and we'll go straight to your, your place and drop it off. 13 bucks <laughs> ship, done. Deal. That's worth it to him. Mm. Right? So that is what you got to be thinking about. If you're a reseller, you should be able to get out of your inventory fast. You shouldn't have to, like, you should not have the problem of being able to get rid of your stuff, especially because you have the eye. You have the eye, right? You're good at spotting good deals, then how come you can't sell your items? If you have the eye, all you have to do is discount your items and they're going to move. If you're picking up questionable items, then it's different. And that's what this whole channel is about. Mm -hmm. Less but better. Okay, sorry. That was a lot of talking. I've been <laughs> talking good. for like 40 minutes, guys. <laughs> all right. Um, well, Jamie did have a follow-up question on his. Yep. Um, he says, can you go over the math again on the 70K? How many items sold per day and how much profit per item? Yeah. So 10 items a day, $20 profit each. That are sold. Yeah. That are sold. So mm -hmm. list 10, sell 10, $20 profit a day. Uh, I'll take off, a, um, maybe take off two weeks a year. Um, but I, I actually don't think listing is that hard. I haven't missed a day since May 5th. I've been listing at least one item a day in my Poshmark closet and I'm, I consider myself a busy person. Mm -hmm. So I still have time to list at least one item into my store, one fresh item. And we're talking replenishable items here. So replenishable, sometimes people think, oh, if I just add one quantity, does that count? No, it doesn't count. One fresh item a day. So I'm adding one fresh item to the state. So the, so the machine keeps, the machine is bigger. The machine gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, let me give you guys an exa another example. Um, let's see here. Hopefully I'm not losing the connection. I think it's looking okay. Okay. I, I'm good for questions. My, sorry. Oh. Guys. Um, Mountain Sky says, have you tried using AI to write your descriptions and titles? It's super fast for great content. It is fast, but I don't need to because like cute baby Jordans size 10 is good enough. Mm -hmm. All my items have been selling without that. Writing an elaborate AI description would take too much time. I'd have to enter it into the AI machine, copy and paste that into it. It doesn't make sense for me because they are already selling really fast. Um, I, I, people who are saying it's because of my social media following don't know what they're talking about. 
The people who are buying my items are not all from social. That's ridiculous. There's not people who are watching this channel waiting to buy something from me. It's because it's a good deal. I'm waiting for someone who lives in the Bay Area to say they have 3,000 items and nothing sells. I will drive over there, with hopefully with Christine. Mm -hmm. I will drive over there and we will list 10 items into your store that are good. At least one will sell that same day in your crappy store. First day, we'll list 10 good items in your store. At least one will sell. First day. So I, I just don't believe it. I don't believe that you can list great items in your store and they don't sell. That's impossible. I, I don't know how that works because eBay's job is to connect great items with people. It's mm -hmm. impossible to list 10 great items in your store and it doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. You can list 10 garbage items in your store and it won't do anything, but it's impossible. Even if your store has been stagnant for months, you list 10 iPads in your store, you're going to sell one immediately. Maybe all 10. So I just, I just don't believe it, that your store is so broken, you can't list good items into it to fix it. Mm -hmm. um, Timothy says, bending over to lay out the clothes for photography will be very bad for your back over the long term. It won't be. I don't have to bend over. We talked about this in the group. You might bend over, but I don't have to, and I'm six feet tall. And shout out to Levi. Levi is six foot five. Does not need to bend. Does not need to get onto his knees. Doesn't need to bend over. He said it was slightly uncomfortable, but it only took ten minutes. But don't ten you have to pick it, pick it up again. I'm not going to demonstrate because that's like the secret sauce of the group. Okay. But essentially, <laughs> right? We're taking pictures like this, and the items are to our left. Can they see me? Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to show you how to do it, but you're, we're not advocating coming down here and bending to the ground. Like there's no reason to do that. We, yeah. And it's only 10 items. It only takes 10 items is only going to take me six minutes. Six minutes is not going to ruin my back. It's probably a good stretch, mm. right? So we're not talking about spending hours here laboring. Mm. We're not building the pyramids here. We're just taking 10 sets of photos. Um, it's not that bad and if you really wanted to you could elevate this some people in the group have this elevated like about 20 inches and then then you don't have to bend bend over as much but you guys would be shocked you guys will be shocked when you go into the group watch tech do it it's um all right we get started here in just a second just a reminder we have uh, calls from 15 different clothing ex er, uh, 15 different experts Michael does our toy call every single week. Um, so yeah, it's, we don't only talk about clothing. Mm -hmm. And a reminder for you guys that um, 15 years ago, Tech and Sports sold cards. So it, it, it's all similar. Um, also guys, we're at... What if the item is too big for your, your box, right? So it's not really too big. You can always just put it in like, even though these boots are ridiculously big, even if I wanted to put them in like this, or for some reason I wanted to sell a Christmas tree, I could just put it in the corner here. If you really want to sell everything, the system still works. Because mm -hmm. um, sometimes you just put the jacket, if it's like a jacket, you would just put it on the shelf next to it. You can just put it on the shelf next to it. Also, the, um, you can make your items sell. I don't believe you. If I discount these two items, they will sell. Why can't, why can't people just improve their store? Guys, I have to read this, I have to read this story to you. It's kind of, it kind of blows my mind. You ready? Okay. Okay, I have to read this testimonial to you guys. Thank you, Chris and Tech. After six months of slow sales on eBay, I went through your content and I updated existing listings my item specifics were incorrect. I had 509 items in my store and zero sales for six straight weeks. I went through, I saw $250 worth of stuff and 18 items the first day. Wow. Okay. She went through her 509 listings in one day, fixed all of them, had 18 sales the next day. After six weeks of zero sales and six months of horrible sales. How, what is that? There's no way you have 509 items and you can't go through them and make a few sell. I don't, I don't, I, I don't believe you. They're that bad that you can't discount the items and get your money back. At least get your money back. You paid four, you can't discount it to 599 plus shipping. No one will buy it for six dollars plus shipping. Shame on you for picking up that item. If you're buying something for four and you can't sell it for six, what are we doing? 
Like you at least get your money back if you sell for six plus shipping, you can start over and pick something different. But that quote from Maya Angelou, I need to get it tattooed, I love it so much. <laughs> do the best you can until you know better and then do better. That's all you can do. It, the best I could before my Poshmark closet is on the floor. Now, three weeks later, I have a professional photo setup. S still on the floor, but it is a professional setup. <laughs> and maybe one day if somebody comes up with a system better than this, then show us. But right now, the, the undefeated record is 23 seconds for photos for 12. 23 seconds for, for 12 photos is, I don't know if, it, if, if you can even, some people can't even get ready for a photo in 23 seconds. They haven't taken a single one yet. This is 23 photos all the way through. So it is a slippery slope between like thinking you know and then actually doing it. Um, but Levi in the group is six foot five. He has no back problems. His photos only take 10 minutes a day. I don't see how that's being an issue. You, you have to get out of your bed, right? You have to get into your bed. Like that's already one. So I, I, I can't sympathize if you can't bend your back this much 10 times a day. Like if you want to be a reseller, part of it is being physical. If you need to make it vertical, you can. Who's, we're not, I'm not the boss of you. I'm not saying mm -hmm. you should do it this way. I don't use the word should. Mm -hmm. You do it however you want to do it. As tech would say, you're free to run your business how you see fit. We're not here to tell you what to do. We're just showing you what we have seen does better. So this is actually shocking to me. This is embarrassing to me, honestly. That this one shelf, 500 items, is enough to make 70K a year. This one shelf, if you had 500 items here, they're all $20 profit, 300 sell a month, that's 70K. 500 items, 10 selling. That's, that's not that crazy. In fact, there's plenty of room in here. You could, you could break dance in the middle of your thing every day. You have all this room. You could learn river dance here if you had a TV up here. I mean, it's fantastic. This is like actually a decent amount of room. This is 15 feet wide. You don't even need this much room. I, I just realized you only need this much room if you have another row of shelves of things that are taking forever to sell. But if you just have good stuff, you only need this much. Guys, everybody has this much room. You could technically put your bed underneath here. I was just thinking, like, I was talking to tech, maybe if you had a storage unit, right? Let's say that you're super duper broke. What you could do is um, steal a bike. Okay, don't steal a bike. Get it, rent a, find a really cheap bike, right? Sleep in your storage unit during the day underneath your shelving. So you get a 10 by 10 unit, right? Put a bed underneath here or sleep on the floor during the day because you can't sleep there overnight. At night, go to a McDonald's. Most, I mean, in my area, there are McDonald's that are 24 seven. Go to the McDonald's at night, do your listings during the night. Then you, you don't have to pay rent. You can have your nice little storage unit and you only need this much to make 70K a year. Sell 10 a day, list 10 a day with 500. Um, everyone here has listed an item. Like um, everyone here has listed an item that's sold within 30 days for $20 profit. You don't have to pick up things that sell slowly. And if you, if you, you should be able to, I, I don't know though. I feel like guys, what do you think? If I sold this pair of Sorel boots, size 12, right? You guys tell me on eBay, right? For $24.99 plus shipping, how long would it take to sell? $24.99 plus shipping. It's in excellent condition, nine out of 10. No scuffs, no damage. What do you guys think? $24.99 plus shipping, how long does it take to sell on eBay? I honestly think one day. I don't have eBay, I have Poshmark. It's not the best. I don't know what you guys are saying, but right. I still feel like it sells in one day. day. It takes one day. You might even be able to ask more and sell in one day, but, but we're not even asking one day. says one day or one hour. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't seem like seem it would take that long. Yeah. Okay, I'm down. I'm done with my, my rant. More <laughs> questions. <laughs> Um, Lindsay says, what do you recommend if the closest thrift store to me is 30 minutes away? I live in a rural area where everything is a good amount of distance to get to. That's a good question. So I recommend you make a route, right? So I would pick 10 different thrift stores, spend two days, two full days sourcing. That's how I would do it. Don't find anything, go to the next store and make a route. Most people live within one day of a big city. So you're going to have to make a big trip and just hit as many stores as you can and be really picky because don't let me have only 500 items and sell 300 a month. Don't let that get you down. Let that inspire you to go find great items. You know, like, I feel like 
Does it have to be $20 profit? No, you do the best you can with what you have until you know better. I can wait for the money on these Sorel boots or I can sell them right away, right? I feel like if I discount the Sorel boots to $10 plus shipping, they might be gone as soon, like I might go to the bathroom and come back and they're gone, right? And I'm not making a huge profit, but I can start over. Mm -hmm. At least I get my money back. This is what I don't understand. The, those of you that are having slow sales, why can't you just discount your items? Somebody give me an answer. Why, if you don't, if you have a cash flow problem, why can't you just discount your items? On, on what not? If I say, hey guys, do you guys want this for 10? And it's crickets. And I say nine, there might be someone saying warmer. <laughs> and then eight, warmer. And then seven, and then it'll sell. Right? Isn't that, isn't that how it works on eBay? Can't you lower your items and get your cash back? That's, I'm really confused by the people who have 3,000 items but no money. Why can't you sell? Maybe people are buying their items too high. So. Even if you're buying items too high, can't you just sell it for close to what you paid for it? You can't even sell for what you paid for it? That's the part that's really concerning. Mm -hmm. Like, I understand you paid eight for it. You paid, eight, you paid 12 for these boots. Why can't you sell for 16? Get your money back and go, go sourcing again. And if you, um, if you have 3,000 items, why do you have to go source? Mm -hmm. Why can't you just sell a few items and, and pay some bills? How come people are saying eBay is not giving me enough sales to go buy more items? You guys realize eBay is not the one buying your items? eBay doesn't buy your items. Customers buy your items. If you discount your items, customers will buy it. it it's, it's to have 3,000 items and no sales is, I don't know what to say, but I'm getting that email pretty regularly. Chris, I'm really frustrated. I have 3,000 items in my store. eBay won't give me any sales. I can't go shopping. And I'm like, you don't need to go shopping. You have 3,000 items in your store you can sell. Mm -hmm. So, um, sorry. Sorry. No, we're all good. <laughs> I don't know why that alarm keeps going off. Um, okay. So, in, <laughs> in terms of um, a sourcing route, yep. uh, also perhaps they can source online as well, you think? 100%. If, yeah, if everything is um, If you're too in a far. rural area, you can source online, although that's very difficult. So I did have this on Friday. We were, um, this is really important. Um, on Friday, every single Friday now, we are doing a BOLO call in, on my call in the morning. So 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, we're doing a call where we go over BOLOs. But now I realize I was having people post an, a snipe. So Tech would post like, I, I see this shirt for $17.99 and selling for $100. I see this is selling for $20 and selling for $160. All these like mega profit deals, but most people don't have the skill to do that. So what I want to do is actually have people in the group teach us something about something. So, so I um, was looking up rings, right? And people were saying scarab rings. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. S-C-A-R-A-B -A -A rings are on trend right now and we were looking up what words and it was like oh ones that have bugs on them are more valuable ones that are turquoise are more valuable ones that um, have the ones that are handmade are more valuable the ones that are mass produced aren't worth as much and you can tell by the markings on it that's mass produced after that information right a lady went out and she found a beetle um, bracelet that was worth $65 and she paid three dollars at Goodwill from with that knowledge so that's what I want the Friday call to be you come on the call, you actually teach all of us one thing that will help us learn. Not like um, force feed us a bull that's like, hey, go to store on 9th and Jackson, ask for Janet, give Janet $3 and be like, give me the good stuff. And she'll hand you a paper bag and go home and it's prop. Like, there's, where, is, where is that? There's no profit store that you can do that. You have to just go there and do the best that you can when you get there. So teach us stuff in the group. I'll, I'll bring some information I think is useful. Over time, every single Friday, you sharpening the saw, that's worth it. You're going to learn how to, do, how to do the photos and listing part in our group in a month. After that, it's just, okay, I can photograph in a minute. I can list in a minute. I just need to improve what I'm looking for so I can go to the store and kick ass. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, Heather says, how to price items on Poshmark for fast sales? Oh, well, I'm sorry, what was the first part? How to price items on Poshmark for fast sales? Um, at your comp, like figure out what the price is going for on that and then 
price at the same amount or a little bit less. That's it. Mm -hmm. um, Poshmark is actually really easy compared to eBay because the competition is um, different. Like people ask a lot of money on Poshmark, like a lot of money. Like, like a J. Crew blazer sells for sixty five at at, the, at J. Crew. They price it for sixty three. And, and I got it for a dollar, so I'm pricing it at 12. I don't, I, I, why are you pricing it at 53? Because it's 55 at the store. No, they're, gonna go to, they're not going to buy it. It's like I've never seen higher prices than Poshmark. It's the highest prices I've ever seen on any site. People are asking prices that are sometimes above retail. I know you can get it on jcrew.com for 60, but you're on Poshmark already, so why don't you pay me 70? Then I can sell less items. I don't, I don't have to do as much work if you pay me 70. But then right next to it is Bob, and Bob is selling the same thing for 10. I, Poshmark has the highest prices I have ever seen on items. I've never seen anything like that. Um, eBay also has really high prices on things, but I think Poshmark takes the cake on highest prices I've ever seen. So price your items so it will sell today if you're, if you're desperate. If you're less des the less desperate you are, the higher your prices. If you have a 100,000 square feet in Montana that your uncle gave you, big building, free, right? Um, he also installed solar panels so there's no electricity. Um, your Aunt Diane, she'll work for you for free because she's nice, right? And um, you're a trust fund baby so you don't need money. In that scenario, price every item for a million dollars. Because you're not desperate, you don't need to sell it. You can just fill up your giant warehouse and, and Di Aunt Diane will help you list it. Never sell anything. Because you don't need the money. So price your items based on how much you need the money. That, that's, that's how I'm looking at it. Like, as much profit as you can in relation to how badly you need the money. And then differentiate yourself if you can. If you can have a really large selection, really helps. Because I have had, let's see, my first couple of weeks on Poshmark, I'll show you guys. Um, my first couple of months on Poshmark, I'll show you. So I have 120 sold. I have 120 sold on Poshmark. I have 30 items for sale. So I have 30 items for sale. I haven't had any days with no sales since I started. I never had more than 35 items in my closet. I haven't had a single day without a sale because I'm in there making sure things sell. This is sales 101. I don't want to wait. I, want, I, I can't come here and not make money. It's so expensive to operate this. It costs millions of dollars. I can't just come here and wait. I'm not going to wait for eBay. Okay, if you guys, I wrote this, this saying down. Um, what do you guys think, if you agree or not? Just because it's not your fault doesn't mean it's not your responsibility. Do you guys feel like this has some weight or it's garbage. Because it's like, is it my fault that eBay had some kind of glitch today and it's not working? No, but still my responsibility to go bring home the bacon. I got to figure it out. They, if they have a glitch, I can't just wait for them to fix it. You guys have way more time than me. I can't wait for them to fix it. I got to go in there and forcefully make my items sell. And they go in there and change it. You know what? eBay was having a bad day. So I had to go in there and make some discounts to get some sales because my life has to go on. Um, but everyone here, would you liquidate your whole store for what you paid for it so you could start over? A lot of people would say yes. Um, Luke Lopez says, what advice would you give someone starting whatnot? I love it. So whatnot, um, I think that Giveaways are really important in the beginning to keep people in and your title. If you say, I'm giving away Lululemon today, people will come. Okay, so number one is title and thumbnail, just like eBay. Title and thumbnail are the biggest. Um, your, your giveaway is really important. And then while the people are there, you need to sell. So I've been doing a lot more raids. When I raid people, right, sometimes they're like, oh my God, there's a hundred people in here. And so they're taking advantage of my audience, right? I'm plugging 100 people right in there. Oh my God, this is so awesome. This is the best. Chris, you're the best. Daily Refinement, this is so awesome. By the time they're done being excited, there's two people left in their room. Everyone has left. They didn't sell anything while the audience was there. So like, got to be ready. Got to be quick. People don't want to wait. People are bored. People are swiping through your show. Um, on average, 1,100 people swipe through my show. Go somewhere else. I lose the attention of 1,100 people during a stream. That's how fast it is. So 
You gotta be really good with deals, prices, engagement, selling, hype. Mm -hmm. It's 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 um a lot about you, your personality. It's about what you're selling. It's about the format. Um, what's her name? Something Lopez. Uh, Luke. Luke. So Luke, if you have Luke's pick, and there's nine different options from Luke, so it's Luke's picks. Guys, highest bid gets to pick which one you like. I like that because it's. The buyer's choice, they get to pick something that's more fun. So entertainment, fun, choices, selection, giveaways, all this stuff plays into having a successful whatnot stream. And I've done thousands of streams. So people who have done 10 and they want to give up, I don't know what to say because like I've had dozens of streams not work at all. Mm -hmm. So you just suck and then next time you suck less. Mm -hmm. Um, Peter says, I bought someone's eBay store and currently transferring listings through Inkfrog. Yeah. Would you transfer them all at once, a couple thousand listings, or gradually over time? I might redo the whole thing because after now what I know, uh, I wouldn't transfer their garbage listings that didn't work for them into my store because it just kind of ruined your store. I've done that before though. I've bought stores and absorbed it into my own using Inkfrog. I just don't think it's a good way to do it. I would just go through their store, find out all the items that suck. Don't list those. Lot them up, sell them locally, set them on fire. Don't put them into your store. List only the good stuff in your store the normal way. Once you learn how to do it, it only takes you 23 seconds for photos and a minute for listing. How many listings? 2,000? Um, a couple thousand. couple thousand, yeah. So 2,000 items would take you um, 100 hours. So that's around a month or two. List it all into your store, crush it. I, I don't want other people's stuff in my store. I want to start over and have it be fresh. And I want people to see the evolution of me getting better over time. You guys saw my Poshmark started with items on the floor. It'll evolve into something beautiful. It just takes time. I just don't want people to have this excuse of, I'm a perfectionist, so I don't get started. That's BS to me. Like, you need to practice. So people who are waiting a year to put out their first YouTube video, a year to list their first item. It doesn't, I, I don't see, there's no vulnerability there. There's no, there's no like relatability there. People wanna watch you grow from the bottom all the way to the top. Like right now, it's just really, really important to do a good job. I am pretty proud of the fact that I have 49 ratings on Poshmark and 48 of them are five star. I have one one star because I ship slowly. So now I'm really focused on trying to get my ship time to 0.9. So I'll show you guys this. Um, I'm looking at this right now. Right now, my um, I'm going to show you guys. My ship time is 1.1, and I want to get it to 0.9. I want it to say on my profile, same day shipping. I also have the same goal for whatnot. So I'm working on it. I like to have same day shipping on whatnot. I want to do the best job that I can. Best deals, same day shipping. Mm -hmm. Um, business with Xander says, I'm 13 and I do 100 bucks a month. My stuff seems to be getting lots of views and some watchers, but yep. no sales. What should I do? Great question. So you're going to take a look at each individual item and find out if it's priced too high, the photos are wrong, titles are wrong, item specifics are wrong, pricing, shipping, handling, and it might just be the category that you're in. So there's about 13 or 14 reasons why your item might not sell. And I would just go through the checklist, top to bottom in your listing, and just start adjusting. Awesome that you're 13 and doing this. So if you learn properly, hopefully you're under parental supervision because under 18, you need somebody to help you on eBay. Um, but don't get discouraged. If you're starting at 13, if you just do this for 10 years um, without losing your enthusiasm. So um, what is it called? What's the quote, guys? Something is going from failure to failure without loss of enthusiasm. Guys, I've been, I've been knocked down a lot. I don't lose my enthusiasm though. Mm -hmm. I got suspended on eBay after doing $7,000 a day and my enthusiasm took a dip for like a minute. Like <laughs> I was sad for a minute and then fine. Mm -hmm. So like it, it is what it is. Like you can start over on a different platform. You can sell these Sorel boots on any platform. Guys, it was selling Mercari, eBay, Amazon, brand new. You can sell nice stuff anywhere. So. I just think people are not willing to do the work to go hunting for better stuff. They live in a rural area, so they give up. If you live in a rural area and it's, uh, you're 100 miles from somewhere, 
maybe reselling is not for you. Um, what was the name of the series with Barack Obama? Working, what do we do all day? Working, work. So no, we, I, we, I was watching this documentary on Netflix yesterday with yeah. Barack Obama. I think it's called Work, What We Do All Day, something like that. Yeah. And um, I didn't realize that half of America makes less than minimum wage. Um, they call these invis invisible jobs. So like, for example, you're a janitor. You show up when everyone's gone, right? Clean, maybe $9 an hour. Leave before anyone gets there, right? Your hours are, are, are odd. Maybe you sleep during the day. You're not, you're not seeing anybody and nobody sees you. You're like an, this invisible person in the U.S. that just exists or people who are doing service jobs or, or labor jobs that are just completely invisible, people that just don't exist. And I realized how lucky I am. When I had my first job, guys, can you guys put in the chat how much you made at your first job? I made $5.25 parking golf carts. Um, mm -hmm. My first job was at Old Mill Golf Course in Salt Lake City. So I, I, somebody's like, hey, do you want a job? I was 15. In Utah, you can work a few hours when you're 15. So I went and um, I was parking golf carts and I'm like, hey, is there any way I can make a little more money? Because this doesn't seem, this doesn't, doesn't add up very fast, right? Like I had to take the bus here. It's like, um, kind of not a lot of money. And they're like, no, it, that, that's, this job pays 5.25 an hour. There is no way to make more. So I was like, okay, cool. Not gonna do this, right? So passed. Next job, when I was 16, I worked for Strivectin and it's the wrinkle cream and it's basic research. I had to drive all the way to the airport cause that's where it is. It's a freaking hour drive from where I lived. I asked the guy, hey, can I make more money? He's like, yeah, all I have to do to make more money is you sell more creams, we'll pay you more money or you can work more hours cause there's a base. We pay you something crazy like $2 an hour. You get paid $2 an hour, but then when you sell something, you um, get paid more if you sell more. And if we have to pay you $2 an hour for two weeks, you're fired. You're not here to make $2 an hour. You need to be selling this cream, right? Mm. And if you get better, we'll give you the next product, which happened to be Lip Plumper. I remember this because it was my very first time in sales. So in my life, I've never had a job except for parking golf carts for like a month where I couldn't make more money if I worked harder. Mm. I've which is different. Yesterday when I was watching the show, people work for 27 years without a raise. They get one job and they just stay there forever. The only way they sometimes get a raise is if they're part of a union or like sometimes the company is generous and they have a cost of, of living increase, but they just like, okay, that's it. I'm just a janitor. And they go and it doesn't work. And then there's also this lady that, that there's no jobs in her area. She's in a rural area. So it just made me think, interesting. Like your circumstances dictate so much, right? You're gonna have to like, perhaps move to a different area. Perhaps you need to get around different people. Perhaps you need different skills. This lady who really wanted to be a healthcare provider ended up having to work at McDonald's because it had better benefits and better, like for her, McDonald's was a good job, mm -hmm. right? Till she was able to figure out something else and get back into the healthcare field, which is where she wanted to be. There was a dentist that she lost um, her ability to stand so she ended up doing DoorDash. And I was like, dang, this is crazy. She wanted to be in dentistry. She got a dentistry degree, but she lost the use of her legs. She couldn't stand for very long. She had to sit. So then she ended up doing DoorDash and she showed that she made $16 in one day driving. And I'm like, wow, this exists out there. $16 a day, all day driving. Obviously, that doesn't even pay for the gas. She's transitioning into doing makeup. She's like, oh, I found out that if I do makeup for weddings and people always compliment me on my makeup. So she, she was like, I can go from making $16 a day as a DoorDash driver to 500 a day for doing makeup at weddings. But that's only two days a week. So she was like cobbling together all these different incomes. But in the beginning, I think that's what you do. Like in the beginning, I was like trying to make some money from YouTube, trying to make some money reselling. I, I did a digital course, which was like, all right, trying to like figure it all out. Now I realize that if you are reselling, you are selling things that people have already made. Mm -hmm. um, so like, it's a lot easier to sell something that somebody already spent the time making popular. You're just buying it at a price where you cannot lose. Um, I have one more thought and I want this to be what my video is about today because we're gonna film after this, mm -hmm. which is like on our card call last week, Colin kind of blew my mind because he was like, sometimes when you're buying cards, you could buy a $200 card, the person gets injured and the car's now only worth 20. Or you're buying this pack hoping that something is in it and sometimes the car's not in it and you end up losing money. So you have to have more wins than losses to make it in the card category. And I was thinking, 
huh, you don't have to do that as a reseller. You could just go to the thrift store and only buy things that sell for a lot and buy them for under the sell right now price. So clothing doesn't have a very high sell right now price. Like this pair of old navy pants. It doesn't, what would you guys pay right now for a pair of old navy pants right now? Not in your size. Probably a dollar or less, right? You're not going to pay a lot for this, right? But for a Fitbit, it'd be much higher, right? A Fitbit, you, if I said, hey, Fitbit right now for $10, it's gone, right? And you got it at a garage sale for five bucks, you can get your five dollars immediately or wait. You should be able to discount your items and get your money back immediately. That's my whole point. Um, you shouldn't have to take a loss. And if you're cash poor right now and inventory rich, that's a problem. And that just making me think last week, we recorded a secret podcast and I was just thinking, man, I want to be inventory broke. I want to walk in here and be like, man, there's nothing in here. Man, nothing in here. Just echoes. Instead of right now, it's like this perfectly insulated place because um, there's so much stuff in here. But I'm excited, guys. This is a brand new start for me. Um, I don't know if you guys remember, but just last week, this room was completely full. Mm -hmm. So please go to dailyrefinement.com. I have a couple of wholesale boxes in there for jeans. Um, still looking for somebody local to come pick up 500 pairs a week for, for 1,000. Um, let's see if there's anything else. There's a bunch of people in California and it ends up being really cheap to ship. Or if you're in Washington or Oregon, it's cheap to ship. And you're still going to make money if you pay three per pair. But I like giving that good local deal to somebody local and that relationship building over time because I don't have that. I, I wish I knew like everybody near me who's what they sold and what their niches are. There's a lady down the street that sells makeup. Um, I don't have any makeup plugs, but if I did, I could call her. Mm -hmm. um, we, we were going to buy one pallet of makeup so I could see what was going through, but it actually melted on the way from New Jersey to, San, to Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And that's actually pretty common. Mm -hmm. So like, um, guys, when you're selling makeup or things that can perish, that's also quite scary. Mm -hmm. um, so that's not much of a Q&A today, more of me rambling. <laughs> maybe, maybe we'll, take, you had two, a lot on we'll your take, mind. take two more questions and then we'll, and then we'll go. Okay. Well, I have some very simple questions. Okay. One is from Lynn. That says, she says, what is your closet name? Poshmark oh, closet. Risa or Nirvana. Mm -hmm. yep. Donovan, again, says, how do I join the group to become a better seller? And no, I'm not a bot or paid. Nice. <laughs> Thank so, you, Donovan. So um, <laughs> patreon.com slash the resource podcast is our a mentorship group. Mm -hmm. um, it's in the description. Um, that group we've been running for th almost three years now. And... Um, I have learned so much from the group. Every single Friday now, I'm going to upgrade. If you read through the posts every day, you're going to see people finding insane stuff every single day. And the stuff is out there, right? There's people in the group who only sell things that are $40 profit, people who only sell things that are $50 profit. And they just have a smaller space. So like if you have room, each one of these shelves for me will hold 500 items. Maybe you don't want a bigger store. There's no shame in having a store that's only 500 items and you make 70K a year. Nothing wrong with that. Anybody here say that's shameful? I think it's fine. It, it, it's a problem when you have a building for, full of stuff and don't have any sales. That's a bit scary. Um, but hopefully this is encouraging, guys. This is going to be the start of something really special. Um, I'm potentially going to have somebody else do it, but I'll do it myself for the, until um, till the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Make sure that I get this thing going. But I um, let me show you guys. This... <clears throat> These are the boxes that I, that I use. Be careful. These are the boxes that I use. And um, I'm just going to build them as I go. So like mm, I used to them. like how pretty it was to build the whole thing. Mm. But like I'm going to encourage myself to do it in as little items as possible. I really don't want this entire room to be full. It's actually nice having a nice space to just breathe and relax and this is so epic. Most people could have one shelf and I guess if this is the room, right? And you had very limited space, you could pull the carpet out, take pictures right here and do it. And then of course, these kinds of box lights um, are, I think they're in my resource description, but um, yeah. they are collapsible. Mm -hmm. You could take these down if you needed to, but like honestly, if you want to make 70K a year, I think it's perfectly reasonable to have this much space. Mm -hmm. Like just one shelf and the 0.5% sell-through rate is just four of these. So 0.5% would be four of these shelves. 
1% would be two shelves. 2% would be one shelf, something like that. 2% sell through rate. So if you have 100 items in your store and you're selling two a day, roughly you only need this amount mm -hmm. to be there. So one this would be- One question. Oh, yeah, sorry. go ahead, go ahead. Oh, um, we got a super chat awesome. from John Santos. Do you offer or are there any Excel spreadsheets that I can use to, for inventory list, a tracker, maybe some softwares if they're better? We don't recommend tracking software um, because it's just too time consuming. You're going to have gigantic stores, so having that all on a spreadsheet is very difficult. We recommend doing that your first 100 items so that you learn. Mm -hmm. But once you have a proper system, it'll be accurate. You'll have 500 items listed. You can just use eBay as your inventory system. You don't need a complex system. The only, the only reason you need <clears throat> a complex system of double tracking it is if you lose items or you cross list, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. like, you got to see if it's sold over here and did that. And that image I showed you guys before of the person glued to their phone, I'm actually thinking about uninstalling the Poshmark app on my phone because you don't need it. Like, I feel like you can do share to followers on the computer and you don't need Poshmark on your phone. And I think Poshmark is very bad for your mental health. If you're always on it, sharing or looking at it, I think that's very negative. So um, somebody last week asked, if I could only choose Poshmark or eBay, do the same on both, I would choose eBay because it's better for your mental health. Mm. I just pick a platform that you don't need to constantly be on. Don't need to be on it on your phone is great. Um, we don't recommend the eBay app either. Just everything on the desktop. Actually be able to take a break from your phone and enjoy the rest of your life. Don't just be a slave to your to eBay or Poshmark looking at it all day. I, um, when I you know, went to Poshfest, I mean, everyone's on their phone the whole day. Mm. Even in an event with all these people, everyone is just looking at their phone all day. It's like not my favorite kind. Might as well stay home. Mm -hmm. Like going to go to an event so you can look at your phone all day. I mean, that's that's brutal. So I'm excited, guys, to get this all set up. Um, I'm going to manifest my eBay store back into existence this summer. And then I guess if I'm, I'm not going to do this, but if, if I could pull off 500 items for Poshmark here and then next to it do 500 items for eBay, that would be really funny to me. Like, here's my Mercari store, here's my eBay store, here's my Poshmark store. They're all these tiny, profitable stores. And it'll just make people realize that it's, it's the items in your store that make it sell, not these tricks or tips or things that you think will work. But appreciate you guys. We'll see you guys next week. Yep. I know you guys have a lot of questions, we'll but we will, <laughs> we will answer them next week. Thank you for joining in, everyone. DoorDash is here. Okay. Okay. Bye. Hello. Yeah. You here?